Okay, so we've looked at how to create an assignment, but there are a few extra things that you can do with Google Docs that might help you. And these are brand new features. These are things that I'm using for my own study, and it's something that I would recommend that most students are use, um, using as well. So let's have a look. Now we've already looked at things like headers and how to add images and how to wrap text. However, there are some new features that might help. I'm going to start off by going to the insert um, and under insert at the top now you'll see these things called smart chips and you'll also see building blocks. I'm going to start with a building block because this for an assignment is really helpful. So with building blocks what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this thing called a review tracker and what this is going to do is it's going to give me a table where I can put down all the tasks I need to do, any notes, um, and I can give them a status. So this is like tracking my assignment to see how well I'm doing. This is really good for longer assignments and coursework. Rather than reviewer, I'm going to put tasks. Status is fine um, and notes is probably OK. Um, I'm also going to put here notes and timer. So in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put task one. I would recommend that you give like this a, a proper um, proper name. So say task one is to write my um, introduction. Task two specifically for um, iMedia might be something like a mood board. Um, make mood board. Task three for me. Um, right, justification. So I know I have to put lots of, of things in here. So this could end up being a list of, of lots of different things. Now, this status here, this is based on things like project management, um, and it's not necessarily perfect for a student. So if I go into add and edit options, I've got a review status. That's fine. I can keep the name. Um, not started. That seems fair for a student. In progress is OK. Under review, though, not quite. Um, so proofread. Something that uh, we should all be doing. Make sure you go back and read through the work. Um, make sure it makes sense. Even somebody else reading it for you um, just to make sure that um, it reads well. There's no spelling errors, things like that. Um, there are editing options in both um, Google Docs, Word, um, and I believe there's one in Pages, where it will give you an idea of anything that you might improve in terms of grammar. Rather than approved, done, ready to hand in anything that you it works for you. You can add in these statuses so you can make these as formal or as fun as you like. I also like to change the colours because these are not quite as, as bright. You can see I've used some custom colours before. And the way that I did that was to click on customise. You can then, so it starts with the text. I'm going to stick with my text being this um, down here. So nice bold black and the background. Here's the preview. I'm going to bring that all the way over here. If I want that, say I wanted it to be like a really clear yellow there we go there's an in progress click OK and that's going to pop that up there this one if it's proofread there we go done I like to use a nice clear green so I can choose the colors that I've used before and it will remember from other documents so I'm going to also now save this and it will say do you want this for just this instance or apply to all Apply to all means everything in this table or just this drop down. Well, I want to apply it to everything. I don't want to have to do that again. So you can see there we've now got all of these. So not started, not started, not started. There we go. And say I've started to write my introduction. That's now in progress. So as I start writing my task, I might find it useful to keep an eye on how long I've spent on something. And this is really good if you're doing things like revision for an exam, but for assignments and coursework, keeping a note of how long it took you is a good indication for um, how long you, need, you have left, um, but also how long you need to spend on things.
So if I wanted to add a timer in here, I can go up to insert smart chips and you can see here you've got a timer and you've got a stopwatch. Now a timer, say um, this was an exam question, I might say I have 10 minutes in the exam to write this essay. And then I can press enter and you can see there I've now got a timer. Now when I press this play button, that then starts the timer. It's like a countdown. And so for this one, I would then write that essay and see if I can do it before the timer runs out. If the timer hasn't run out, I can then go in here again and I can press stop. You can see there it's stopped at 9.45. I've still got that time left. For an assignment, however, it might be better to go back up into your table. So task one, if I go back up into insert, smart chips and stopwatch, that would give me a timer on how long it took me to do something. So instead of counting down, this one counts up. And again, you can just click on it and it's going to just start the timer. I'm now working on my task one. This is some more text and I'm working happily away. And then once I have finished or I've got past that little bit of writing it to start off with, I can then click it again and it stops the timer. So it tells me how long I spent on something. You might not find that useful, um, or if you are struggling a little bit with making sure that everything is done on time, um, or you are worrying that you're not spending enough time on something, this is a really nice feature. Okay, some other things you might want to consider. Again, I'm going to go up into our insert, um, and inside the smart chips, there are also things like dates, um, calendar events, if you have your lessons and things like that inside your calendar, then um, this is a really good idea because you can then go straight to a meeting directly from your document. Um, voting chips are great if you're working with other people. Um, but one thing that I would definitely be using in the building blocks over here. Oh, is things like project assets. Now you have to create assets tables as part of iMedia. So this is actually a really helpful uh, table. You would have to adapt it to make sure that it works for us. Um, if you are taking notes in a lesson, then meeting notes again is really helpful. There are um, bullet points already set up for you and also things like action. So it gives you little tick boxes. You can also create your own custom building blocks. Now that means that you can take multiple things and things like the smart chips or tables and drop downs and other things. You can make your own. So if something uh, works really well for you, so maybe you've got a set of tasks status and you want to have your timers already set up, you could actually build one of these, save it into your Google Doc so that next time when you create another document, then you can make your own. That's maybe a little complicated, um, but it's definitely something to have a think about. So some of the things that are definitely going to be useful to you would be our review tracker, our drop downs and timers. Have a go, see if any of them work for you. If they don't work, that's absolutely fine. Remember, this is absolutely your document. As long as you are creating a document which contains all of your brief um, and it is processed as a single document rather than multiple files all over the place, then I am going to be perfectly happy. OK, if you find something else that is really cool within any of these um, things that we're using. So if you've found something new in Google Docs um, that we haven't used that you found useful for your assessment, please tell me um, and I will make another video on them. So we've got lots of help videos. In this case, um, please make sure that uh, if you have any questions, you're using the Q&A feature. Um, that Q&A feature is at the front of our courses. That sends me a message. It pops up on my screen and I will be able to help you.